Uh, Sego Guego. My name is Ryan Rice. I'm the executive director and curator of Indigenous art here at Onsite Gallery. Uh, thank you for joining us this afternoon. Uh, I'd like to begin by recognizing that uh, Onsite Gallery acknowledges the ancestral territories of the Mississauga of the Credit First Nation, the Haudenosaunee, the Anishinaabeg, and the Huron Wendat, who are the original owners and custodians of the land on which we work, stand, and create, and Zi Dagorondo. Our event today is based upon a partnership with the Inuit Art Foundation. Together, we present Upfront Inuit Public Art at Onsite Gallery, a new series of commissioned digital murals by Inuit artists. So on your way in, I hope that you were confronted by two giant pink oak picks. Our inaugural mural featuring the work of Kabluziak uh, was installed in April, so it had a nice run all summer and will be on view for only 10 more days. Uh, we, have, we started the project with uh, a rotation of three murals and we extended our partnership with the Inuit Art Foundation into 2024. So totally we'll, in total we'll be showing six Inuit artists outside up front at Onsite Gallery. Onsite Gallery recognizes the important contributions of the Inuit art sector and is pleased to work with the Inuit Art Foundation to support art and artists in the public realm. So one of our main goals is to bring it up front, to get, make it public, because uh, we know that Inuit art plays an important role in the Canadian art market, the Canadian art economy, and we want to make sure that it's seen in, in, in real life and, and out there in front of us. So the Inuit Art Foundation is the only national organization supporting Inuit artists working in all media and geographic areas. The foundation empowers and supports Inuit artists' self-expression and self-determination through its many platforms, including the Inuit Art Quarterly, Canada's largest art magazine. The Inuit Art Quarterly profiles, uh, which are included in uh, their work with, along with artist service, awards, scholarship, and mentorship opportunities. I'd like to welcome Alyssa Procida, Executive Director of the Inuit Art Foundation, to say a few words and introduce the artist and our program today. Thanks so much, Ryan, and thank you so much, everyone, for being here and for those of you who are watching at home or later. Uh, we are so, so thrilled to have this partnership with Onsite Gallery and to also be here with the amazing Kabluziak. Uh, who we're so thrilled to be starting this uh, project with. And so I'll just give a little bit of uh, biography for you, and then we can maybe jump into some questions about your work. That sounds great. Same. Cool. So I think uh, many people will be familiar with Kabluziak's work, uh, but they are an Inuvialuk artist and curator based in Calgary. Born in Yellowknife and raised in Edmonton, they received a diploma in fine art from Grant McEwen University in 2013 and completed their Bachelor in Fine Arts from the Drawing Department at the Alberta College of Art and Design in 2016. Uh, they also completed the Indigenous Curatorial Research Practicum at the Banff Center for Arts and Creativity and have gone on to have an incredible career so far, <laughs> including um, being on the cover of the spring issue of the IAQ, <laughs> being shortlisted for the 2021 Kanoyuak Ashavak Memorial Award, and all kinds of other, uh, you were shortlisted for the Sobe Award also, um, which was amazing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, and they also have a very active curatorial practice and were most recently part of the inaugural All Inuit Curatorial Team for the Winnipeg Art Gallery's Kamayuk uh, and the installation Inua, which opened in March 2021. So um, you often use art and humor as a coping mechanism to subtly address diaspora. Uh, and so I could read this artist statement that you have more fully, but I thought maybe I'd just open it up by asking um, about your practice, if you want to tell us um, about that. Um, sure. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, I haven't done an in-person artist talk in like two years. Um, but yeah, I'm a <laughs> multimedia artist, I guess. Work across different um, media, which that's what multimedia means. Um, uh, I make art about being Inuk, being queer, uh, making jokes, uh, but also serious stuff. I think I've lost all my brain in the airport. 
in my, in yeah, the Yeah, when luggage. did you get here? Oh, like yesterday. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't even know what to talk about. Do you want to tell us about the two works out front? Yeah. Um, so the two works, uh, the pictures of uh, Plucked Ukbik and the Furby Ukbik. Um, I feel like those works sort of blend the ideas that I think about a lot of um, what it means to make contemporary Inuit art, what it means to be an Inuk artist or just an artist. Um, and so I'm always like seeing how I could blend those two ideas together or make them contrast. Um, and uh, the, uh, the plucked ukbik, I, I just like, you know when you like stand in the shower for too long and you just start thinking about everything? Uh, I came up with these guys in the shower and I, <laughs> I made like a tiny little mock-up just like with like sharpie dots instead of the embroidery floss and sent a picture to my parents and they're both like, ooh, that's gross. Like, <laughs> who would think to do that? It's like, yes, <laughs> it's worked. Yeah. I guess my question, uh, it, it actually works well with this exhibition because we're, in the, we're sitting in an exhibition called Souvenir by Jordan Bennett and he's working with the um, is working with the cultural economies that have been developed by Mi'kmaq communities, especially with uh, porcupine quill work. And it didn't really connect at first when we were looking at Kabluziak's work to put on the mural outside, but actually the Ukpik is an iconic Canadian figure and is actually something that was very commercially plentiful, mm -hmm. I think in the 1960s, right? That it was like... A, used for World Fair, trademark. So it's interesting that the two show, the two, the mural outside and Jordan Bennett's exhibition are both playing off these ideas of, of souvenir. Mm. But my main question for you is, how did you feel when you walked by these gigantic representations of your work? Uh, it was super overwhelming. Uh, I don't want to cry, but I probably will at some point. Uh, but I just like, yeah, I took pictures and I'm going to send them to my mom and took like a dumb selfie. And but it's just uh, surreal to see like just like a little guy made into a giant wall-sized mural. I thought that was pretty cute. Yeah, when we when when we brought the project to the table and we um, put together a committee to long list the artists and. I think it was something that we all seen at Art Toronto last year when you introduced the Oak Picks. Uh, so what are we expecting to see this year? Um, I made another Oak Pick, um, like really short notice-ish. Like I, I couldn't figure it out, but I finally got it and uh, Shannon Norberg from Norberg Hall, she like put it with her carry-on luggage <laughs> and brought it here. Uh, but it's like a red, uh, seal fur, seal skin. He's got like a really cute harness, a little like a sub BDSM ukbik, yeah. uh, and then <laughs> some some other works that are like kind of the same vibe. Um, I made new works for a show that was in January, uh, so I made three new sculptures. Um, that show was curated by Derek Chang, and it was at the McEwen University Art Gallery. I forget what it's called, but it's like... Aftercare? Yeah, Aftercare. Yeah. yeah. So there's... I made a, a heart-shaped paddle, um, a ball gag, but the ball is like soapstone, and then uh, a crop with like, like black hair at the, the tickly part. That's amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I will say I had the, yeah, we had the joy of seeing the works in person last year at Art Toronto. Um, and one of my favorite things was that the carrying cases that they were in had the, the holes so they could breathe. <laughs> I Does I, the new one have that as well? <laughs> I mean, he's probably into breath play, so probably not. <laughs> that was not the answer I expected, but I'm really glad I asked you that question. Um, <laughs> 
Yeah, I mean, I guess to pick up on your sort of question here, Ryan, and I think about this with your practice a lot, Kabluziak, uh, the way that your work kind of speaks back to these ideas that exist in the public um, that may or may not reflect the realities of Inuit art and experience around um, what people think of as Inuit art. And I know that part of the reason we really wanted to start with the Upix uh, as part of Upfront was that they're very, uh, they very clearly confront some of those ideas, not just around this sort of very iconic figure, um, very directly, but also this idea of like commodification and um, the sort of mass sort of volume that people imagine around some of these objects. Is that something that you think about a lot when you're creating? Yeah, I think more so recently it's like, it feels like I want to hold up a mirror and be like, like, I don't know, this is like just like amplifying what these misconceptions or preconceptions and like joking with people almost it's like, I just, I love that. It's such fertile ground to play with, to have all those, um, these preconceived things that I could just like yoink up and then play with. I think you did that very successfully with the stone carvings that you had in the exhibition, All These Tundras. Among All These Tundras. Among All These Tundras, mm -hmm. because we had, we had the exhibition here, mm -hmm. and we got to see your ephemeral, like, you know, representations of these objects in stone that are also drawing on the expectations of what an Inuit, an Inuit artist does, right? Mm -hmm. So what drives you to challenge that? Um, I feel like it's that, uh, what's that word for you just want to like fuck shit up and, up. you know, just be like, I don't, I don't want to say antagonist because it's like, what's that? Up. Yeah. There's a word I'm trying to think of. I don't know. Just be like smarty and mess around. And I think it's just in my nature to be like that. Like... Like, I think my brother is like that too, but in like a really soft, doesn't want to upset people way. And I'm like, I'm the younger one, so I'm gonna be like, mm. <laughs> um, But yeah, I think there's just, like this like punk rock thing about being like capitalist, but anti-capitalist, <laughs> having to exist in this world that we have no choice. Um, but yeah, that's like, I, I just love it. And what is, is, do you get different reactions from different people, from the art world, from the community? How do people respond to, to you stirring mm. things up in, in different ways? I, I get like mixed response and it's like so delicious to get any response ever. Cause it's like, like how cool is it you're engaging with my stuff? Like I'm just like some nerd who lives in Calgary. Um, but it, it's cool to, to get like such a gut reaction from people because it's like, yes, my plan is working. <laughs> uh, I had an exhibition uh, at YYZ, Artist Outlet, last year. Um, it was basically like trauma porn. And uh, I had one person who was so upset and like wanted to talk to the artist and like, what was this about? And I like tried to explain it to them and they were like not hearing it. But in the back of my mind, I'm like, this is working. I'm making people uncomfortable. It's like, it's so delicious. That's incredible. <laughs> um, and I guess to pick up on that in a slightly different way, you were talking about uh, you know, how your work engages with these themes and also like being anti-capitalist but having to sort of exist in a capitalist structure. How, how does, how's it been for you navigating being part of the art market in a particular way? Because that has so, it's been such a defining characteristic of a lot of uh, Inuit art sort of production and the way that people see it in the world. Mm. I think I like have an advantage because that groundwork was laid and I just, just get to slip into like this Inuit art history of commercial practices and um, I have to give a shout out to Norberg Hall. Like that gallery is amazing. Uh, they're really, really supportive. Jarvis and Shannon, like I could like talk, talk through stuff with them and just figure it out along the way. Cause it's like being a commercial artist is a weird place to exist and they totally understand that. So it's helpful to have people in your corner. 
Yeah, I can, I can imagine also because they have to sort of like interpret your work to people on your behalf, right? Yeah. <laughs> is it different having that kind of relationship with intermediaries? I mean, even the magazine sometimes or writers about your work than when you're doing this, like with an artist talk, you get to talk to people directly and you get that sort of delicious reaction <laughs> or... Say that again? Like, does it, um, your experience in those spaces, right, uh, in terms of sometimes, like, confronting things, does that shift a little bit when you have, uh, when you're working through intermediaries or when you're sort of maybe getting feedback directly from people mm. who are more or less uh, excited about it? <laughs> I think it's easier when there's a person in between because then I don't want to make the person feel like I'm laughing at them right to their face, even though it's, like, it's really funny what they're saying. Um, so I think it's nice to have that buffer so I don't look like a total asshole. It's good advice. Yeah. <laughs> so could, could you talk a little bit about your process? Um, you work in very different medium, as you say, and what attracts you to making something, the idea, something that you've experienced, mm. something that you're drawing upon for inspiration? Could you, like, could you mm. give us an idea of what happens when you start coming up with an idea and start making? Mm. For the most part, it's usually like the concept or like what I want to do comes first and then I slap on the, the material afterwards and like usually figure out what works best for the concept and what's going to have like a rich visual history that I could uh, work with and like have that as another layer to what my concept is. So... Like with the soapstones, it's like there's such a rich visual history there that I could just like, you know, add that to my my pile, mm -hmm. collect. Um, I remember, uh, I hope correctly, that um, part of when you started uh, working with Soapstone was up in Inuvik as part of a residency for the North-South program that used to be out of Canadian art. How was that experience working in Inuvik, working with that material? Um, it was pretty heavy, very emotional. I cried a lot, but, like, I was staying at my mom's friend's house while they were, like, doing their summer thing. And they had a cat, so I was like my emotional support cat, was taken care of. Um, but it was, it was really beautiful too. Um, so I was working with the uh, uh, Great Northern Arts Festival, and they, they put me up with the carvers that are like there, on site carving, and um, it was really sweet too. There was the the Taylor family; they're like renowned artists and carvers, and. They like helped me out with stuff and they're like, oh yeah, I remember your uncle, like just like talking about stuff. And even like I made a Listerine bottle while I was there and I just loved like all the other carvers that come up be like, like <laughs> pretend to take swigs out of it. And I was like, this is, I have no words for how cool this is. Yeah, I have a, the question is around, um, identifying yourself as queer and how does that enter your work mm. so you're working like with two identities you're coming from two very separate to some extent uh, you know places in terms of how the world sees it right and how do you collapse that in your work or how does how do you how does it stand out on one end or be buried mm. to another extent mm. I, I don't know how to answer that, but I love the way you phrased it. Like, I think all, um, that just reminds me of when we were working on uh, Inuit and we were like picking artists and figure, like, figuring out proper representation of all the regions and all the different whatevers. And I think somebody mentioned like, oh, like we got to include queer artists and be an Isinayak. And we just like looked at each other and it's like, like isn't we just kind of assume every artist is queer like and it's like water is wet like <laughs> i don't know if anybody assumes straight is the is the um, the, default. the default yeah yeah i think it's great that i mean you know people i mean students sit here at like okay we'll look up to you for that right because mm -hmm. it's like they see someone who's actually embodying what they want to do as well. So I think it's really important that 
people understand that it's not, it doesn't have to be marginalized and it can be as vague as possible mm. or it doesn't even have to be named, right? Or mm. identified. Um, so what's happening in the next, com next year for Kabluziak? Um, I have an exhibition up currently in Calgary. Uh, it's called Mittak Duak Dunga, No Translation Provided. It's up at the Bows. It opened on October 6th, I think, and it's up until mid-December. And then December 2nd, I have a solo exhibition also in Calgary at Norberg Hall. Uh, that is also new works that I was working on on the flight here, actually. <laughs> uh, and then So some people got a preview, maybe, and didn't realize it? Yeah. You were sitting next to you? <laughs> yeah. I think I just was, like, annoying my neighbors with my arms, like, sewing. Like, they're just, like, trying to watch some movie or something. Uh, in January, I'm doing a residency with FD13. It's a artist run, I think they're in Minnesota or Minneapolis. It's uh, going to be there for the whole month. Uh, also have a new works and some old older works that are going to be in a group show at the Carleton University Art Gallery. Um, that sounds like a really amazing show. Uh, Heather Gloliorti is uh, one of the curators involved, so that that should be fun. So, so like not busy at all. No, is what I'm hearing. No, <laughs> just kind of hanging out and watching TV. Yeah, and yeah. TV taking show. it easy. Yeah. And because we're here for Upfront, I'm wondering if you have any sort of hopes or ideas for uh, the future of public display of Inuit art, I mean, as a curator as well as an artist. Mm. Sorry, it's a really big question. Yeah, holy cow. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just keep thinking of what you were saying, Ryan, about like, um, like, when we were just, I forgot, but like we were talking about like queer being just neutral and out there and just existing. I feel like it would be like same vibes for Inuit art. And it's like, oh, this is just, it's just really cool art. It's not like this weird pedestal fetishized, like, I don't know, culture vulture-y, like, ooh, Inuit art, these Eskimos are so amazing and they just like, Ooh, there's such a rich history, and it's like, yeah, but also we're just artists. We're just like vibing. There's no need to make it like this big uh, exotic exotification pedestal. Like that just feels like another arm of uh, colonization. But yeah, just like the normalization of Inuit art. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah, totally. Do you want to open it up to? Just one more question. I guess one of the one of the things that we're hoping comes from this project is that by inserting Inuit artists within, like, on street level, in front of everybody, large scale, have you ever thought of doing public art? Have you ever applied for public art projects? Have you have you done have you done any? Um, I have one public art piece that was part of. Uh, like a group sort of called the the Wander, Wandering Island in Calgary. And uh, I'm working with uh, Kafka Biennial f to do like a public art installation. I think it's going to happen in this coming summer. So I just did like the, the mock-up drawing before I came here. So it's fresh on my mind. Yeah, I think it's, I mean, it's a great way to bring visibility in, in terms of the expectations of people think it's a small carved sculpture that is gifted, da, da, da. and then when we blow it up, we see the capacity that the potential, and we're hoping that we're able to mobilize it because it's easily mobilized. Mm. We just need financial help if anybody it's, out there wants to help us, us do your that. Money. Yeah, yeah. Give your money. Give Inuit your money. Yes, <laughs> yes, always and forever. Um, we have so many wonderful people sitting here. I'm wondering if any of you have any questions for Kabluziak. Yeah, hold on one second. Oops, sorry. I'm going to run around with a microphone. 
Welcome to Toronto, Revolutia. Thank you. <laughs> My, um, I was one of those people when I saw the owl, I was like, wow, and oh my God, what are the um, traditional Inuits going to, um, how are they going to react to this piece? Because having been in the art, you know, the very commercial part of Inuit art, and I saw oodles of these sealskin um, ukpiks, mm. and I know they had a, practically a whole factory happening at Expo 67 in Montreal. Mm. So, Mari, I hadn't reacted like that to a work of Inuit art in a long time, because it made me smile, it made me laugh, it made me say, oh my God. <laughs> Oh, thank you. So, um, so thank you for that. It's wonderful to see. But um, I think you are very brave to be open about who you are. Um, and how do you deal with the negativity that resides in our culture at the moment towards artists such as yourself and especially artists who are queer. Mm. I think it's, uh, mm. I would like to learn. Yeah, uh, thank you. That was, yeah, it's a super beautiful co uh, comment. Just like trying so hard not to cry, but like what's wrong with crying in public, you know? Uh, but I think the, the negativity and the, and those comments, for me, I went and did like a lot of therapy, and that helped. Uh, but also having like compassion and understanding that like uh, some folks don't have the same access to resources as others, and have different education levels, different access to information, different access to community support, a different exposed to different worldviews. And it's hard to try to have that compassion when you take, when I, I take things personally, so it's hard to have compassion. But I think it's like, my, I think my therapist said, uh, she said like, uh, not my circus, not my monkeys. <laughs> so that's not my circus. I'm not gonna take their monkeys. Um, but I think, um, I'm hoping, like, knock on wood, that those, like, internalized coloni colonization vibes aren't being passed down and being upheld, and hopefully that with enough, enough Inuit um, growing up with different exposures to different worldviews and having um, maybe breaking or trying or working through uh, intergenerational trauma and like trying to wash off the sins of colonialism that hopefully these become less over time and like that's like a <laughs> knock on wood for that thank you so much for that yeah oh we have an online question Ooh, real here fancy. would you like to yeah holy this questions from Jew off YouTube and he's asking um, what link do you make between your artistic and curatorial practice, and what inspired you to become a curator? Can you say that again? Yeah. Um, what's, what difference do you make between your artistic and your curatorial practice, and what inspired you to become a curator? Can you say that last part? Again? <laughs> and what inspired you to become oh, a curator? Inspired. <laughs> um, the difference between my art practice and my curatorial practice, it's not a whole lot, probably. Uh, I always like, at least want to try to maintain this similar vibe, similar values, bringing this like, hopefully like radical, shitty attitude to museums and galleries to be like, you know, we don't have to do it the way that like white curators do it. We could do it better and we could have more fun and we could give artists more money and we could hopefully push forward like, uh, museum exhibitions and like just like change it for the better piece by piece uh, so that's the curatorial bit um, 
I don't know if anything really inspired me to be a curator or like do curatorial projects. Uh, I uh, interned at the BAM Center for a year as the Indigenous Curatorial Research Practicum. And I think that was, I don't know, a way to, to learn more about like how the sausage is made and that the, the artist versus curator uh, roles. So, yeah. <laughs> I guess it's uh, I, we recently we've seen such a wave of this new generation of Inuit artists. Um, you among them, you being on the cover, a magazine that is showing in a very different way such uh, cultural continuity, similar to what we see in this exhibition, is how people um, are gaining and building momentum off of a greater history but entering it on your own to some extent. Mm. Do you have a big network of uh, community that you're working with, uh, friends, family, mm. uh, or, or you, you know you're more introvert and you work in your studio and mm. uh, you know you, you talked about having the, the gallery as an important uh, mediator for you, mm. but do you, how, you know, how do, how do you situate yourself in this you know, so be listed and on the cover and like, how do, how do you manage that? And how do you like create dialogue with, mm. with others around this to some extent? Mm. I text my mom a lot, <laughs> like just, uh, yeah, checking in with her and asking about things and like what things used to be like, what does she know from her parents and her aunties and uncles and like, that she like she's she's an amazing resource. Ew, I shouldn't call my mom a resource. Ew. <laughs> That's weird. Sorry, mom. Um, but like yeah, having a like uh amazing art community that's like local but also like um internet like like Instagram communities like having just having people around to bounce ideas off of and and like have that support is it's very important. Well, I have to say it's so nice to see you. I don't think we've seen each other for Jeez. a while, right? Yeah, Since it's the been last. Out. Yeah, I can't remember. Yeah. Oh, yeah, cuz yeah, we saw each other at the you know, we studies conference, which yeah. was really exciting. That was so much fun. Yeah. I guess uh if I had a final kind of question it would be um I mean, maybe not final. I could ask you a question about your work like, forever. Um, do you have any other words of advice for Inuit artists or any artists who are starting out or who maybe um, are trying to think about things differently and might feel um, like they don't have the, that kind of support that you described? Like, any, any suggestions? Mm. <clears throat> mm. Uh, maybe that that feeling of internalized colonization needs to be worked on because I had that for sure and that like internalized racism and that uh, what do you call uh, imposter syndrome um, imposter syndrome to me is like a tool of colonization to make you think that you're not good enough and not worthy um, but we've been here longer than Canada, so fucking give her, like, what's the worst that happens? Y yeah. <laughs> like, feels like the most, like, button ending possible. <laughs> yeah, so I guess we'll end it there. Um, I want to thank Kabluziak and Alyssa for being here. I want to thank Kabluziak for uh, saying yes to this project right away. And I know that we will miss, I will miss coming to work every day and seeing those, uh, <laughs> the plucked and the Furby Upik outside every day. Um, but we will have a uh, reception now after, and please join us for more conversations meeting with the artist, seeing the exhibition um, Souvenir by Jordan Bennett. 
Uh, we will also be installing a new mural on uh, November 8th, so we'll be saying goodbye to Kabluziak's work, and you'll be seeing, please come by, a uh, new mural by Kyle Elikuk will be up uh, until March, and we will have Kyle here, uh, probably in March, to do uh, another Artist Talk program uh, as, part of, as part of the programming that we want to do with Upfront. You had something to add? Oh. The only thing I was going to add is that it's awesome, so everyone should come and see it. Uh, and thank you, Ryan, so much for hosting us and having us and working with us on this project. And thank you so much for oh, being here. Uh, it's such a pleasure. And thank you all so much for coming. And uh, please join me in a giant round of applause for the incomparable and amazing Kabluziak. Thank you.